In breaking news now, the world's leading automotive criminal conspiracy, Volkswagen, has appointed a 36-year-old green politician to a seat on its supervisory management board. Right up there, dude. Apart from the hilariously contradictory optics of all this, this is a super curious appointment to me because... Here's a woman who's been popularly dubbed a car hater because she doesn't own a car, she doesn't even drive, allegedly hates freeways. She prefers instead to ride a pushbike, read comic books and grow vegetables. Not that we need icing on the cake, but if you want some, she does not apparently have any salient qualifications. And don't the shareholders just (laughs) love it. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpo.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Straight out of the website. Card. Now, Julia Willie Hamburg, yes, that is a real name, is a green state politician from Lower Saxony. Lower Saxony is a state of Germany, kind of like New South Schittsville is a state of Australia. Now, she's like the deputy premier there, okay? I think it's a coalition kind of deal. She's a mother of two who studied political science, philology and philosophy at the University of Gottingen, but left without a degree. Oops-a-daisy, according to Wikipedia. She's now a shot caller who oversees the Wolfsburgian cascade of criminal conspiracy. It's been such a boon to automotive muckraking for the past. Eight or nine years, ever since gassing the world. And of course, those unfortunate monkeys. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Now, I'm not a hardcore IT guy, but I've heard enough, especially recently, about data breaches, scams and hacks to know that being online can be inherently risky and costly. You don't have to be tech savvy to use NordVPN It's a simple one-stop cybersecurity solution. One click and you are protected from hackers, malware and pop-ups across as many as six devices. NordVPN is the world's fastest VPN. I don't even notice it running in the background, frankly. And it only costs about as much as a cup of coffee to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure every month. NordVPN can also save you money because you can assign your virtual location to another country where, for example, flights and accommodation might be cheaper than they are back at home. The same goes for streaming services and you can access live sporting events and other content that may not be available where you actually live. It's a pretty small price to pay for cyber security. Not to mention the potential savings also on the table. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC to get a huge discount off your plan plus four months free. Totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. Doubtless, it seems to the likes of you and me at the outset that putting a senior state politician on the board of a major corporation like Volkswagen is a massive conflict of interest. It seems to we Aussies kind of like, I don't know, putting John Barillaro on the board of Santos while he was deputy premier of New South Shitsville. Like, what could possibly go wrong, dude, right? So it's not really like that at all. And we'll get to that in a minute. There's a reason why the state owns a big chunk of Volkswagen and gets seats on the board. But according to Volkswagen, the 20 empty suits, which is my personal opinion of what and who these people are, who occupy the seats on the supervisory board are, quote, responsible for monitoring the management and approving important corporate decisions. Moreover, it appoints the members of the board of management. So the supervisory board, look, if this were a gladiator movie, you know what I mean, the supervisory board is on top and the management board does the day-to-day, 
you know, cleaning the dunnies and things of that nature. So anyway, Julia Vegetable Comic Book. She sits there because she is number duos in what I can infer is a coalition government in the state of Lower Saxony. And the other seat on the board is held by a dude named Stephen Wheel, who is the full-on cheese El Presidente of Lower Saxony. And the reason that they sit there is because the government there owns a big, fat, steaming chunk of Volkswagen. In fact, they own 11.8%. Put that in perspective, Porsche owns 31.4% and foreign institutional investors like big pension funds in the UK and Sweden, things of that nature, they own just over a quarter, 25.9%. And another interesting big shareholder of the criminal conspiracy is Qatar Holding LLC. The Qataris are kind of interesting because Qatar Holding LLC is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Qatar Investment Corporation, which is another way of saying the Qatari government taking the filthy lucre from oil exploitation and jamming it anywhere around the world where it can reap something of a dividend. So that's the shareholders there and the amount that they hold, the major institutional shareholders. But Lower Saxony, despite owning just under 12% of the shares, they own 20% of the voting rights. And they've got this kooky arrangement built into the constitution of Volkswagen where they get the right of veto on some decisions, particularly decisions relating to things like manufacturing plants and where the new ones are going to go and things of that nature. So 20% of the votes plus veto versus... Porsche, which owns 53.3% of the votes, despite owning just, just 31.4% of the company. And Qatar holding LLC is 17% of the votes versus just under 15% of the shares. Okay, so that's the shot calling arrangement at Volkswagen. And it's kind of why the government of Lower Saxony gets duos seats on the board, dude. It's because the government owns this chunk, about 12% of Volkswagen, and they reap the dividend from the ownership and they use it to do the kind of shit that governments do, which would be maintain the roads, have a health system, law and order, things of that nature. So that's their relationship with Volkswagen. And let's not forget that if you're in Germany... Building cars is kind of like mining in Australia, right? So that's where car building sits on the framework of what's important and what's not in Germany. It's pretty freaking important, in other words, okay? So the Criminal Conspiracies Supervisory Board, according to them, is comprised of the following people. Five bean counters three union wonks, three lawyers, duos engineers, one former Qatari politician, one Qatari banker, and the Qataris have got seats on the board for exactly the same reason the Lower Saxonese do, okay? There's also one mechanic, one machinist, one dude named Porsche, not a coincidence, and he's also a lawyer. So who wouldn't want to go to those parties over at the Porsche residence every Christmas? <laughs> You know the way Germans are when they let their hair down. Anyway, and now we've got one Carlos Green veggie-growing comic reading cyclist who's a politician who never finished uni, doesn't drive, hates freeways, and she's also the youngest person on the board at just 36 years of age. And I know if you add all of that up, it's only 19 people, but... On their supervisory board website, they do say 20, and yet there are only 19, and I can only presume that they could only find 19 volunteers for this freaking awesome job. Now, anyone who's interested in equality might be interested in this. It's actually easier to be a chick on the board, the supervisory board, before you are washed up or over the hill than it is to be a dude, because... Although there are fewer seats, like there are seven chicks on the board and 12 dudes, but the interesting thing to me is that it's the average age, okay? Now, the Qataris, for some reason, don't disclose their ages. Everyone else does on the supervisory board. And if you take 
the balance of disclosed ages, the average age for dudes on the supervisory board is 64, and yet for chicks, it's just 47. That's a phenomenon, is it not? And I wonder what the feminists would make of that. They'd probably turn it into a conspiracy and say only seven seats versus 12, but to me, getting there on average 17 years earlier than a dude, that's got to be positive, has it not? Anyway... I wonder if there's, you know, uh, some sort of gender-type friction, a bit of foot rubbing under the boardroom table. There could be. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, Germans. And the sandwiches at the board meetings. The sandwiches would be, I think they'd be first rate. They really would. Like, they would be, the crusts would be off and they would be perfect 45-degree isosceles triangles, would they not? And they would be truly you know, premium luncheon meat, high-grade luncheon meat, very little anus or nostril in the composition of the meat. Obviously, you have to have some to maintain the overall texture that's expected, but it would be quite different, I think, to the shop floor cafeteria, just say. Now, according to the young green, Ms. Hamburg, quote, I don't have a car. I like to ride my bike and I like to go hiking. I love comics and I actually like reading a lot. I practice gardening and growing vegetables. That's on her About Me politics page, which I used Google to translate from German. The Times, the German Review and Build recently referred to Ms. Vegetable comic book as, quote, a car hater. <laughs> Nothing about hating cars on her own page, just for complete disambiguation. She's actually the state's minister for education, go figure, which I find particularly curious because of the optics. You know, like she never finished university. She started all of this stuff, never finished university, and yet I'm the education minister, go figure. I think that sends mixed messages to the kiddies, does it not? It would for me. If I was the cheese of Lower Saxony, we'd be having a discussion about perhaps a different portfolio, just saying. She has the second shortest official biography of any person on the supervisory board, and that's behind the union guy from Say It. But I'm tipping he's got a licence and a car, so there's that. The best that Volkswagen spin doctors can say about Ms. Vegetable comic book is on their supervisory board website where they say, quote, in 2004, she commenced her studies in political science, philosophy and German studies at the August University of Göttingen. To which I would you know, respectfully retort, dude... Dudette. There's a big difference between commencing one's studies and actually gutting it out and finishing them. There just is. Commencing's one thing, finishing's quite another. So for me, this is an impossibly perfect appointment, at least in my estimation, but of course, not everyone agrees. The president of the German Association for the Protection of Securities, Ulrich, <laughs> has announced that he's going to sue course. I think the association's probably going to do the suing on his direction, but he'll sort of nudge the lawyers around on the chessboard, I'm sure. And he's going to do that on the grounds of alleged conflict of interest and alleged lack of professional competence. Go figure. The feminists immediately hit back, like the evangelical feminists in Germany. They're not having a bar of this Ulrich Harker sue thing, right? And Pro tip, I would never get in between an evangelical feminist and the cake on the buffet just after the service on Sunday. It'd be akin to getting in between Mama Bear and the Cubs. <coughs> I think you'd agree. So, anyway, they're kind of hitting back with, if Ms. Hamburg were a man, this would not have happened to her, kind of thing. That's the prevailing sentiment there, playing the gender card. And I'd suggest that if you, you take the Fahina out of this equation and add binis and just leave all the other variables the same. Does it change anything at all? I, I fail to see that this is a, you know, genitalia-based critique. I, I really do. And the feminists, if this is the battle where 
<laughs> this is the front line of the war for equality, then let us not just consider, why don't we just consider putting the guns down and having a little ceasefire, a bit of a tater tate saying, let's just all try and get on in future. That's how I'd play it. Now, finally, another hilarious thing. I love the Germans because they, they, they hardly ever laugh, but they're so incredibly funny. Go figure. There's another German senior politician named Olaf Lies, L-I-E-S, which I think is a perfect name. There's certainly a joke there, but because I've got to this point in the report, I'm on the last page, obviously, reasonably unscathed at this point. I'm just not going there with Olaf Lies. He's the economics minister, right? He's the second seat on the board, the supervisory board, usually goes to him, and he's been there before, but now, thanks to Julia's zucchini comic book, right, he doesn't get to front up and listen to those supervisory twats every Wednesday afternoon in the boardroom or whenever, Christ, they, no, Christ knows, whenever they meet, right? He doesn't have to listen to that anymore and he doesn't have to suffer their geometrically freaking precise low anus sandwiches. So if we're looking for a real winner here, Olaf lies, I'd suggest. Cunning stunt, Mr. Lies. Well played, sir even for a politician. <laughs>